Hello there! Well, today we'll be creating this handsome tiger painting on a stone. But before we get into it, if you love art, then you'll have to check out the other lessons at our website at www.montmart.net because we have lots there, as well as links to our Facebook and Instagram pages, as well as to our art club, The Creative Connection. So let's paint a tiger. Once you have selected your stone, you need to wash it first. Use washing up liquid for this. Next step is to draw in the detailed guidelines. I like to use a 2B pencil for this drawing stage, a very important step is the actual stone selection. There is two ways to select a stone for a project like this. One is to select a stone of a general round shape and paint the animal onto it. The other is to select a stone that has inherent qualities that, in effect, bear a rough resemblance to an animal or some specific part of its body. As soon as I saw this stone, I saw the hip bone and the way the tail lay under it as well as the way the leg tucked under the head shape. It just looked like a sleeping cat to me. Once the drawing is complete, I use an acrylic gloss medium to seal the stone. As well as encapsulating the drawing, it provides a much more receptive surface for subsequent layers of paint. The medium has a milky look to it, but dries clear and really brings out that natural beauty and warmth of the stone. And because we'll be glazing our colors on, much of that warmth will be retained. Much of this project requires fine lines, so I'll be using detail and liner brushes. The next step is to redefine the drawing. To do this, we'll be using satin series acrylic, thinned so it has the viscosity of cream. first glaze, I squeeze out some burnt sienna and mix it with some gloss medium and then use a soft Teflon filbert to apply it. I apply it pretty loosely and just aim to keep the coat consistently thin. I cover the black here and there and as the black has to be reapplied at the end, having a slightly darker tone beneath will add more interest. Because the coat is transparent, that beautiful ochre colour of the stone comes through beneath the glaze. This adds much to the colour of the fur. As with portraying any animal's coat, it's near impossible to get a convincing tone by laying down a single colour. As if you look at fur, there is many tones and tints through it. As I get down to the hind legs, I lay the colour on a little thinner as the fur transitions into a lighter tone there. The only tonal modelling is on Mr Tiger's nose. This part of the stone is quite flat and smooth, so I need to suggest the slightly domed broad part of the nasal area with some burnt umber and smoothly transition it into the burnt sienna. I then create a grey from titanium white and Payne's grey and paint it into the area around Mr Tiger's mouth. This area will have lighter, brighter, pure titanium white strokes laid over it later, so it must be a few tones darker than these will be. 
This white fur lies in the tail, around the muzzle, the eyes, the ears and the side of the face. A really great attribute that acrylics possess is their rapid rate of drying. A coat can be reapplied within minutes. This of course makes it a little hard to blend the colours, but you can't have your cake and eat it too. laid the pure titanium white strokes over the grey, an ochre and sienna mix is created and laid over the nose, neck and back. Then a mix of ochre, white with a touch of sienna is created and the strokes are continued to the rear of the animal. The mix is lightened further with more white and taken down the tail and into the white. It's a good idea to charge the brush from a palette knife as it makes it all happen a little quicker. It also enables you to fashion the tip into more of a chisel shape, so fine lines are easier to create. The underside of the legs and the tiger's belly is a very light orange, almost white colour. Once the orange of the coat is in, lamp black can be thinned with a touch of water and the stripes can be laid in. I use the 16-0 liner brush for this and don't block in the tone. Instead, I lay it in in a series of lines and follow the way the fur lies. This is very important as animal fur runs or falls in a certain way. If this isn't appreciated, it can look wrong. Now for the eye of the tiger. First, lay in the eye with titanium white. Let this dry and lay in some yellow ochre over the white. Let this coat dry and then add a spot of black into the medium and lay in a shadow line into the top of the eye. Lay in the pupil with lamp black I then lay in a touch of lemon yellow into the lower portion of the iris to suggest the light hitting that part of the eye. This is quite subtle, but little things like this will make your stone animal look a lot more convincing. I then create a pink from yellow ochre, cadmium red and white and spot it into the nose. Spotting creates more of a textural look. The last step is to spot a highlight of titanium white into each eye and Voila! Well, thanks for watching. You can share your creative projects on social media using hashtag MontmartArt. We look forward to your creations and we'll see you next time.